It's finally Friday, Patriots fans. So I want to touch on a subject here that I know a lot of you guys have been in my comments asking me, why haven't we signed Stefan Gilmore? Well, Gilmore is actually sounding off right now about the exact same thing. Why hasn't anybody signed him? Same thing with safety Justin Simmons. So I want to break down what the Patriots could possibly do after training camp to either sign at Gilmore or Simmons or both. I am your host, Ali Barefoot, but I have one quick thing here. I know you guys love Gilmore. Obviously, he was huge for the Patriots a few years ago, becoming the defensive player of the year, most recently playing with the Cowboys. Do you want to see Stefan Gilmore back in the red and blue? Go on ahead and spam 21 in the comment section down below. You never know what he's doing. He's not signed with the team right now. He could be on YouTube. So spam 21 let him know we want him back in New England because there are several key players still left in NFL free agency. The top 10, if you will. A couple of these positions the Patriots could harp on, specifically the safety and the cornerback position, which is saying a lot because I think the Patriots' defense is already top 10. But if you were to add somebody like Simmons and Gilmore, two veterans, kind of pricey, a little bit old, but I want to talk about how they would improve the roster in just a few moments. I also made a video on possibly a Dory Jackson or DJ Humphreys to really increase that offensive line as well. So the Patriots may not be done just yet in terms of adding people to their roster. But I don't know if they're going to make any moves ahead of camp. It just doesn't really make sense to me. If they do, that's fine. But they have so many question marks around so many positions for the Patriots that you at least got to see them full speed to really know where your weaknesses lie. Because shells only tell you so much. X's and O's, techniques, and OTAs and minicamps, they only show you so much. So I can see some moves happening after training camp. So let's talk about Stefan Gilmore to the Patriots. Why? Because he recently came out and said, I'm not sure why my phone's not ringing. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know either. Yes, he's a little bit older. Yes, he's a little bit expensive, but he's still a dog. He did phenomenal for the Cowboys last year at 32 years old. And here's what he had to say about, about being available in free agency still in late July. There are still some good corners and safeties out there like Justin Simmons and myself that are still not signed. Honestly, I'm still being patient and staying ready until teams see what they have in training camp. Literally what I just said. But you mean to tell me among 32 teams, there are 64 starting corners that are better than me? I don't think that. If teams want to win, I think they should sign the best players. I know I'm, I'm still a starter in this league. I started games last year, but the season doesn't start until September, so we got a while. And I completely agree with Gilmore here. I, I'm reading no lies. He was a starter last year for the Cowboys. He played great for the Cowboys, who had a pretty good defense, not the top 10. But I do know that Stephon Gilmore is wondering, okay, maybe the Patriots could make a move here right after training camp. Because when you look at what Gilmore did for the Cowboys last year, 54 solo tackles, one forced fumble, 13 pass breakups, and two interceptions. He's still got it. He's 33 years old right now, and I get it. That's a little bit old for a cornerback. I understand, but he's still a baller, man. He truly is. When I saw him last year, I did not know he was 32 years old. I did not know he was getting up there, but when you do get Gilmore, if he does come to the Patriots, he's probably not going to be Defensive Player of the Year. I think that Gilmore has officially gone, but the fact that he still has some veteran in him and he's still producing those kind of stats... I would say, why not? I think it elevates your cornerback room almost immediately. Not to mention, Mayo needs a veteran with the cornerbacks. You got Jonathan Jones, who's 30 years old, but I still don't know if that's the role model that you want for Christian Gonzalez. And if you do add Gilmore and Gonzo, that's going to be electric for Gonzalez, a second-year player to have that in Gilmore. And I don't know what Gonzalez and Jonathan Jones do next to each other. We only saw four games with Gonzo last year, so it's still a big fat question mark. Gonzo could be a bust. I highly doubt it. But because he's only played four games, we still don't know since what he did in college. So like I said, Gilmore would be phenomenal for Christian Gonzalez because I'm basing my cornerback room around Gonzalez. Alex Austin, he's been really improving in OTAs and minicamp. I'm excited to see what he does in training camp. Marcus Jones, he's kind of fighting for his spot there. Same thing with Jonathan Jones. He will be the starter as of right now, but is he the best option? Just like Gilmore said, you're telling me there's 64 corners in the league that are better than me? He doesn't think so. And he actually proved it last year. 
Yes, he played three more games, but he didn't deal with an injury. He had more tackles, solo tackles, 13 pass breakups, two interceptions to Jonathan Jones, zero. One forced fumble to Jonathan Jones, zero. Gilmore is putting up better stats. If you have those stats next to Christian Gonzalez, that's going to be a lockdown secondary. But just like Gilmore said, and I said, it's not unusual for teams to do this. There's a reason why those top 10 players have not been called yet. Yeah, you can do age, you can do price, you can do several different reasons why they haven't been called yet. But I really do believe one of the main reasons is because everybody's going to see what they have before they add on more players and make it more hectic for them. I could see Mayo calling Stefan Gilmore if Jonathan Jones does not have a good training camp. So we really have to keep an eye on this cornerback room because I think Christian Gonzalez, I've been seeing his workout videos, he looks great. Jonathan Jones, on the other hand, if he sucks, I'd call Gilmore right away. But let me know what you guys think. Would you guys take J.J. over Stephon Gilmore? Let me know in the comment section down below. Type J.J. He's 30 years old. Type SG for 33-year-old Stephon Gilmore. But like I just saw, the stats looked better last year playing for the Dallas Cowboys. You want to know what else looks really good? This great deal right now in a Patriots sweatshirt, 25% off. I know I'm not thinking about hoodie season right now either, but it's going to start getting cold in Foxborough, so I want you guys to have this to wear in Gillette Stadium later this season. You can get several different colors. You guys got a nice heather gray here. You got a slate gray. You got navy. 25% off. I love a good deal. And if you use this link, chatsports.com slash Pat Sweatshirt, that's got two S's. Pat's sweatshirt in that link. It's going to get you this great deal. Also, it's linked under this video in the comment section right now. So if you guys don't remember it, click that link. It'll take you right here. I think this looks great. You can even wear it towards October when Red Sox are playing in Fenway, if they're playing in October or November. But you can also wear this to several different outings. Boston Celtics playing all through the winter. You can wear this at Gillette Stadium as well. I know it gets cold in the Northeast. So go on ahead and get this 25% off sweatshirt before the cold comes. All right. The Patriots' safeties were actually ranked internally as the top three weakest positions for the Patriots' defense. Now, I do like the safety room when it comes to Jabril Peppers and Kyle Duggar. doesn't get much better than that. But after that, me, it's kind of slim. So let's talk about Justin Simmons. I know we've talked about him slightly on a possible pickup and for agency in a, in a previous video. Feel free to go check that out. But the fact that he now commented on why he's still available makes me think, all right, kind of same situation with Stephon Gilmore. If somebody doesn't produce in training camp, let's give Justin Simmons a call. Why? Because he is an elite safety in the NFL. The way that he intercepts the ball in the last 10 years in his career is phenomenal. 70 tackles, two tackles for a loss, eight pass breakups, three interceptions, and two forced fumbles. And the reason why I'm looking at Justin Simmons, because I get it, you know, the guy's not necessarily in his prime anymore. 10 years in the league, only played 15 games last year, missed two games. But when I look at the Patriots' safety depth chart, like I said, Peppers and Duggar, phenomenal. Boom. I think these are great players. You might even extend Peppers before that season starts because you want to lock him down. But Schooler, yeah, but he's kind of a mid-safety in my opinion. Jalen Hawkins, he's kind of still developing, so you really need that veteran. I'm not saying Justin Simmons is going to come in and start being your safety over Peppers or Duggar, but I think in terms of a secondary option, absolutely. In a perfect world, if you pick up Gilmore and you pick up Justin Simmons, you got a little bit of an older secondary, you got a little bit more of an experienced secondary, but it would be pretty legit. So Justin Simmons commented on why he's still available in NFL free agency, and he said, obviously, it would be so great right now to know where I'm going, what I can be studying, who I can be playing for, and matchups that I'll have, and all that good stuff. But ultimately, I think it's challenged me in a positive way. I think complacency can be a thing when you just get caught up in the routine of doing the same things over and over and over, finding little increments of growth. For me now, everything's new. I'm having to ask questions, take accountability, learn from people who have been in it before. Whether they are three years in, 10 years in, just getting some insight, getting some wisdom, I think it's going to help me grow tremendously. It's helped me slow down. It's helped me be more present with my family when I haven't had the chance due to OTAs and not ramping up for camp. But I could sign tomorrow. I could sign two weeks into camp. I could sign first game of the season 
You just never know how these things go. It's caused me to slow down and give up control because it's out of my control. He's taking a very mature approach to free agency. And it also seems like he's ready for a call whenever it happens. But we've got to see how the safeties play out in training camp just real quick before we possibly add Justin Simmons. Because I know these are not two guys in their prime. But with a rebuild in the Patriots, it couldn't hurt to add some experience to the cornerback in safety position with a little bit of inexperience when it comes to the depth chart and when it comes to the starting nod at cornerback. So my question here for you guys now is, should the Patriots sign Justin Simmons? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Type Y for yes, type N for no. And if you guys don't agree with me, that's totally okay. Comment it down below. Let's talk about it. I talk, you talk, and then we talk about it. That's why we have Patriots Today by Chat Sports.